Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, if, uh, if that's what the time is where you are, uh, or good evening. Um, my name's John Flanagan. I'm the author of the Rangers Apprentice series and the Brother Band series, and I'm here tonight to answer some of your questions, uh, tell you what's been going on with the series, tell you about the latest book, uh, which is a Brother Band uh, book called The Stern Chase. Um, Named for the fact that uh, out of the saying, a stern chase is a long chase. Stern chase being when you're trying to catch up with another ship and you're always behind them. Obviously, you've got to overtake them. It's much longer to do than to intercept them. So um, we'll spend uh, some time this evening and uh, I hope I can answer the questions that you want to ask me. And I hope you want to ask me some. Wonderful. John, so can you tell us a little bit about... What inspired you to write The Stern Chase? And what is a stern chase? What does well, that mean? Well, I, I just said what a stern chase is. Oh, um, yes. That's when you're following behind someone trying to catch them. Uh, what inspired me to write it? Um, I had to... Well, I, I had to build a new heron because in the previous book the heron was uh, smashed as it, as it came into uh, Hallisholm Harbour. Um, so I had to have a story about the new heron and what it was doing. And I thought, what would be... Um, what would be scary is if this new sort of kind of experimental heron, because uh, Hal makes a few changes to it on the original design, was the only one left. If all the others were damaged and couldn't put to sea, and if the uh, uh, Eric's uh, ship, the Wolfwind, was stolen, uh, and um, so that that was where the story began, and so. Uh, I put it together from there. That's when when that happens. When you you get that idea. Oh, what happens if all of the Scandian fleet is uh, disabled? And there's only the hero and the new experimental ship left. Uh, and then you think, okay, so what happens then? Uh, and you have to get, okay, how does it end? Uh, and obviously, it ends with. Um, I'm not going to tell you how it ends. Um, so yeah, that's where the idea came from. I won't go into too much detail in it. Uh, I think we'll do another question. Wonderful. Our next question is, how did you come up with the names of the characters and their animals? Oh, yeah, the animals. Um, mm. The names of the characters, there's one um, overriding consideration with the main characters, uh, Will, Holt, uh, Hal and Thorn, um, and that is to have them know uh, words, names that have no more than four letters in them. Uh, this was from a, a, an interview I saw with Ian Fleming, who wrote the James Bond books, and he said, "Always give your main character a short name because that's the one that's going to you're going to be typing most often. So make it four letters and no more." So uh, that was in my thoughts when I was naming people. I'm lucky that I've been able to do a lot of uh, touring in Europe and particularly in um, Holland and Denmark, and. When I'm signing there, people come up with their books and they have a post-it stuck on it with their name because um, it's kind of difficult signing, uh, you know, some of, their, some of the names from, you know, Scandinavian countries or from Holland. Uh, and when you say spell it, they, they, they do, but they pronounce their letters a different way. So they'll say de, a, b, j, e. So they write the names down on a post-it so I can copy them. I keep them put them in my, my backpack and I've got a huge supply of European names in there that I can draw on. So the animals, um, Tug, uh, who's my favourite animal, he was named for the fact that he was always pulling on his reins, so Tug. He's called, in um, Dutch, he's called Trek. And I thought, I wonder why that, why did they change it? And uh, I was in Holland and um, I came to a, a, a swinging door and I saw a, a sign that said Trek which meant pull. So tug, pull, trek, pull. Uh, so they just translated his name. Um, who else? Um, that's about it, really. It's, it's one of the more difficult things, uh, getting names that work. I mean, I've got a journal at home that has so many names that I was playing with, I didn't like any of them. I think um, Hal started out as Dirk, and I thought, oh, that's a bit... Eh. Um, and how I liked, and somebody said, oh, but it's so close to Holt. And I said, yeah, but they're not in the same book, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's a good question. It's a good question. It's one of the difficult things. We've got lots more questions coming through. So Rosalie is asking, 
any chance we'll see more of Baron Arold in the future of the Royal Ranger? Um, well, I, there's no reason why not. I like Baron Arold. Uh, he's, he, I, I used to remind him, uh, me of myself um, because I used to be overweight and I make bad jokes and that sort of sums him up. Um, he's one of my favourite characters. Haven't used him much, but yeah, I could, I could bring him back. Um, why not? Will you touch on the topic of Aslava? Uh, um, what? A-S-L-A-V-A. Aslava. Aslava. It's... A... I can do the next question. Uh, yeah, next. It's, uh, can, can Whoever wrote that, can you qualify that? I, I'm not sure what it... I think it's a country. I'm not Simon sure. Simon said this. Okay. Um, Rosalie says, how old is your son now? Does he still read the newest books? Rosalie, you've got so many questions there. She does. Um, yes, my son now is. Um, how old is he? <laughs> I think he's about 43, 44. He does still read the books. He has a 20 year old son called Conan, who is half Japanese, half Australian. They live in Japan, in Hokka on Hokkaido, which is the northernmost island up in the ski fields. And um, he has. Uh, he has a new dog. He, he, he owned the original uh, version of Kloof. That's where I got Kloof from in the brother band. It was a, a Bernese, a Swiss mountain dog. And unfortunately, she passed away a couple of years ago. And now he's got this beautiful Malamute, which is quite crazy. Um, and when we ring him up, the dog talks to us. It's in the background going, oh. But yeah, he reads the book still. Um, his son recently read one of them uh, and came and said, this is really good, in a very surprised tone. And Michael said, well, yes, my father wrote it, that's why. Um, but, yeah, he, he's still a fan. That's great. Uh, Cheyenne has asked the question, which character do you find that you wish to be? Oh, wouldn't we all wish to be Holt? Um, but I have, don't have his capabilities. Uh, as I said, I, I, probably I'm the nearest to Baron Harold. Um, but again, without his capabilities, because he was quite, quite, uh, quite a great warrior, really. Um, I, I prefer to be the godlike figure who manipulates all the puppets rather than being one of them. It's one of the joys of being an author. You can make people do things. Rosalie is back. She's <laughs> asking lots of questions that uh, fans who are unable to attend the live event tonight. Good on you, Rosalie. So, on your Rosalie. Two burning questions about the future of the Royal Royal Ranger books. Yeah. Firstly, can Will please shave off his beard? Um, why? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, you've never... He, he actually looks quite good with a beard. Um, I don't think he can. I don't think he can. I think he's got to remain bearded because there's too many good gags out of it. He's called Greybeard in uh, the book I've just finished and he takes offence at that. Uh, he said that's a little bit extreme. I would, I would accept grizzled, perhaps, or distinguished, but grey beard, no, definitely not. Um, no, I think he's going to keep his beard. And the second one from this fan is, can Cassandra please, that's in capitals, be coronated? Be coronated. We were discussing it. I'm not sure that coronated is a verb. Coronation is a noun. Um, well, the problem with that is, for her to have a coronation... And to be crowned queen of uh, um, uh, Araluen, her father would have to die. And I'm not prepared to part with Duncan yet. I like him too. Um, so unless he decides to step down, but she's in no hurry. The thing is, of course, once she's made queen, that's going to put a lot of limitations on what Maddie can do. Mm. Elizabeth says, what inspired you to write the Brother Band series? Uh, it was uh, initially I thought I'd planned that uh, Ranger's Apprentice was going to be 12 books, finishing with the introduction of Maddie um, and as the first female Ranger. Uh, and so a couple of years before I came to that point, I thought I need something else to write. I need to, you know, I don't want to stop writing just because I finished the brother the. Um, Ranger series, so I developed the Brother Band series over a period of about two years. I've got, again, a journal with notes everywhere on there. And the difficulty was it was going to be similar to Rangers, but I needed the characters to be markedly different, um, so, which I think I achieved, um, but that was the reasoning behind it. 
Okay. Um, oh, I will just say that when I sat down to write the first, I had it already all planned out, first brother band book, and I sat there at my computer and I thought, where are all my friends? Yeah, this is all new, and I just froze. And I finally, the way I started was I gave, had a, a line of dialogue that I put in, um, and I created the, the scene where they, they're doing a, uh, building a hot water system for, for Hal's mum, uh, which I found a very amusing scene. But yeah, it was, it was really daunting to start. Totally. Two questions along the same lines. Anjum says, will you be continuing the Brother Band series? And Burden, Burden, sorry, says, any more books on the way following this? We need more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you now? This um, one isn't even out Yes, yet. I will be continuing the Brother Band series um, after, after the latest one, which is called The Stern Chase. Um, and, in fact, I have just finished writing another uh, Royal Ranger, which is quite scary. It gets back to... So uh, a lot of you have asked over time, you know, you've moved away from the supernatural things of the Wargles and uh, they're back. And um, there's a, a new evil, evil um, uh, villain called Arazan, who's a sorceress, who's got control of the Wargles and has a group of dire wolves, which are huge prehistoric wolves, and, um, and is trying to raise a demon. It's really scary. Do not do not read after dark, as they used to say about the Spook's Apprentice. And that one's not out until November. No, right? that'll be out in November. November. Yeah, I've just that's being edited now. Yep, great. And then I have another one. There have been some in your books that were quite unexpected and painful. Um, I don't know that I've killed off that many characters. I know um, um, the the original. Uh, head of the rangers, uh, Crowley, he died nice and peacefully in his sleep, but I felt it was it was about time for him uh, um, to decide how to kill him. Well, I don't like killing off major characters because people get upset with me. And, and um, But, uh, yeah, it is difficult to decide when someone's going to go um, because you get to know them. They become very real to you, uh, and it's not pleasant to get rid of someone you like. Yeah. Uh, another question from our friend Rosalie. We know you don't like George, but the fans do. Can he please be featured in a future book, please? Um, George actually makes an appearance in the, the next uh, Rangers book. George has become the librarian at Castle Redmond and um, uh, Maddie goes to him to ask for information about dire wolves. Um, yeah, I like I I do like George. Actually, I didn't like him initially because he was boring. I thought, but he became interesting. I mean, he he in the uh, was it the Emperor of Nihon Ja? He actually saved um, Horus's life and, and got show. He took an arrow for Horus. Um, so I don't mind him. He's he's quite fun. Um, I haven't. Well, as I say, he he makes an appearance in Arazan's Wolves. I haven't got any plans to put him in anything else. But who knows? Jane. I once I once did say he would never appear in a book ever again, and then I needed him for uh, the Emperor of Nihon Ja, so there he was. <laughs> Jane says, Hi, John, would you please, please, please consider when the Scandians go into another battle with the Temuja, they... Temuja? Temuja. Temuja, oh, sorry. She's That's missing right. the I on the end of that. I read it wrong. That they would help... Uh, they would get the help of Holt and Will to help Hal and the Herons to defeat the Temujai. Um, I've, I've put Gillen across with the, uh, the Brother Band uh, as a crossover between the two books. I don't think I will ever put... And there I go, saying I'll never do this, I probably will. Um, I don't think I would put Holt and Will in with Hal and Thorn. Uh, it's too many superheroes, if you like. You know, what would they all do? Um, too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, there'd, there'd be nothing left for the dog to do, for example. Um, and she plays a, an important role in the stern chase. Will Will find someone new? That's from Nathan. <laughs> will Will find someone new? Well, you just never know. Um, you just never know. He might... Um, there is a young courier 
Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, don't know. If he needs to, he will. But at the moment, he's content. Um, I mean, Alice was the love of his life, and it's very hard to replace someone like that. Um, Maddie has served the purpose of bringing him back out of himself, of giving some light into his life. And, and he's, she's like a daughter to him. Um, and that gives him plenty of, plenty of social life. Um, who knows? Who knows? All right, this question is from Casper, age 10. Do you influence the translations? Um, no, no. Um, it, it fascinates me. Uh, I've met quite a few of the translators, um, <laughs> one of whom I disagreed with violently. Um, but um, no, I don't influence them. Um, they will occasionally, if I'm touring in Europe, they will occasionally ask me questions. Um, there's a very, very funny woman who does the translations for uh, the Danish publications, and she um, acts out... When there's a sword fight, she gets a long ruler and acts out all the actions in her living room. And she lives in an old part of uh, the city where the very narrow streets... And one, one night she was practising and acting out this sword fight with a big ruler, and she looked at, out the window and across the street, which was only about 12 feet or so, or four, four metres... There was this family peering out of their their uh, living room window, watching her leap all around her own living room. She's a very funny lady. Um, I, I'm interested in in the translators. I think they do a, obviously they do a good job. Uh, I'm interested, as I said before, when I mentioned um, Tug becoming Trek, how names change. Um, I think uh, Horace in um, main, the main ones I know are Holland because I've been there most often. Um, Horace is called Arno, A-R-N-A-U-D. No idea why. Hmm. All right. This is just a nice comment from Reese. Thank you for all of your writing, John. I love your work. Thank you. That's very nice. Very nice to hear. Um, Elijah says... If oh, you... I thought that was... Oh, that... Oh, that, yeah, that was oh, just a comment. Thank you very much for that comment. Elijah says, If you were to have a distinctive role from your series... Which would you want the most versus which do you think you'd actually have? Um, if I was to take a role in the series, I assume you mean. Um, I, mean I, don't think, uh, I don't know. As I said before, I, I, I don't see myself taking part in the series. I see myself sitting above it, you know, like a man handling marionettes, you know, making them do things, making them go places. Um, it's, it's, as I said, one of the joys of being a, a writer, you can make anything happen. If, you, if you're planning a battle and you realise, oh, my God, the enemy will be able to come round this side and attack them from the side, you can go, well, I'll just put a swamp there. Um, so you, you, can, you can do all that sort of stuff. It's great fun. It's great fun. It's a great power. That's good. I think Elijah was, uh, was thinking, would you be a ranger? Would you be a oh. royalty? Something like that. Oh, I think I'd probably be a ranger because I, I, I'm an archer. Um, so, yeah, and I've got a big green cloak, so... Uh, yeah, I'd be a ranger, yeah. Morgan wants to know, how do you go about organising your world and characters to keep track of all that you write? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Well, I'm very lucky I have an, an excellent editor called Zoe Walton, uh, who keeps what we call the Bible, uh, so that I can ring up and say, uh, what, what colour are Duncan's eyes again? Because I had them changing colour about three times over three different books. Um, so she keeps track of who's who and who's what and uh, whose horse is which. Uh, I do make mistakes. I'm constantly changing the gender of um, um, uh, Gillen's horse, Blaze. She was a, ma a mare originally and then she turns into a gelding at one stage. Um, I think I've settled now the fact that she's a mare. She's a bay mare. Um, but, yeah, Zoe is a great help in this. Uh, and it saves me having to go through, oh, what book did I mention that in? And you go through, I mean, there's something like 27 books now. You know, it's a lot to look through and try to remember which, which it, book a detail was in. So Zoe keeps the Bible, as we call it. And if I need to, I can refer to it. Ruby says, my son would like to know if Araluen's location is based in England. Yes, it, it's, it's basically 
a version of England that's been sort of squashed a bit. But if you look at it, if you pull it out a bit, it'd look like England. And it's off the coast of the continent. It's, it's off the coast of Gallica, which is pretty obviously France. On its western side, uh, there's the island of Hibernia, which was the old Roman name for Ireland. Uh, so, and obviously Hibernia is Ireland, which is where uh, Holt came from. Um, the Kings of Clonmel is set in Hibernia, and um, Clonmel was a town in, um, I think, in Galway, maybe not, um, where my grandmother grew up. Uh, on a farm called Clonbrogan. And I visited when I was first married. My wife and I were in London and we had a honeymoon in Ireland and we visited the relatives. I was the first of the Australian family to, to go back to... Uh, I'm still the only one, I think, um, to go back to Ireland and meet those people. Great. Which was fascinating. Cheyenne says, My favourite is Horace. Thank you for making such a beautiful character. It's just a nice Yeah, comment. Horace is nice. Wendy says that Lydia and Maddie should have an adventure together. Lydia and Maddie. Yeah, that's a thought. That's a thought they could. I think I haven't done that, have I? No, no. That, 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 that could possibly work. Doesn't, doesn't Lydia appear in one of the... Royal Ranger books? In the Royal Ranger books, yeah. Possibly. I'm not sure. Lots of people are thanking you for your writing. Well, um, thank you for your reading. They're loving your books. Lots of extremely lovely comments. Thank you, everyone. And they want to know, do you have more plans to keep writing? I think we all never want the world to end from Nathan. That's oh, nice. yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to stop. Um, that's what, why the Royal Ranger series started. As I said, I I'd planned to stop after 12, but when I wrote that sort of 15 years later, Will and Maddie, and had Maddie rehabilitate Will, in fact, I really liked the combination of Will and Maddie, and I thought, oh, I'm not going to just leave it at that. That's why I did the next three or four um, uh, Royal Rangers, because uh, I like... It's a new twist on, on the Apprentice uh, concept, which, which I really like, and it also... Um, it was in, in reply to a lot of requests to see a female um, ranger's apprentice. Um, and it's, it's got legs, you know, it, it, the story continues. Um, I like her, she's a good character. Uh, I like the fact she uses a sling from time to time, that's quite fun. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna keep going, you know. Great. Uh, Jardo says, greetings from Slovakia. Oh. And he says, Mr. Flanagan, did you see all worldwide book cover graphic variations of your books and do you like them? Oh, yes. I find it fascinating. They, they, um, they used to send me, um, each publisher used to send me a dozen copies of each book. Um, when there are over 20 books and you're in, uh, you know, something like 20 uh, countries, that becomes quite a strain on the bookshelves. Uh, so now I just ask them to send me um, one copy and it, or an illustration of the new cover. And I'm fascinated by the differences in the approach to the covers. It, it's terrific. Um, it's great to see. Um, uh, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, this person says, Would it be terribly bizarre to ask you how you take your coffee? Do you oh, take it with honey? No, I don't. But the reason that the rangers take it with honey was um, I take it black with sugar, probably too much sugar. Um, the reason the rangers will sweeten theirs with honey is I had given them coffee. Now, as somebody very archly pointed out, there was no coffee in the, in the medieval uh, Europe. Um, they could have had herbal tea. I don't know, yeah, right. Um, because I've got a scene in one book where Gillen says, oh, I'm a bear in the morning unless I've had my coffee. I could just hear him saying, I'm a bear in the morning unless I've had an herbal tea. Um, so I gave them coffee, but I thought, I don't know that I could get, get away with introducing sugar. Um, so I thought, how else could they sweeten their coffee? I thought, honey, so there you go. 
I suppose they could have used sugar beets or beet sugar. Yes, true. Simon says, which country does Scandia symbolise? Oh, um, Scandinavia. I mean, um, Denmark, Norway, Sweden. Um, I mean, it's I, when I drew the world map, I didn't refer back to our map, so it's completely out of position compared to where Scandinavia lies. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically the Scandinavian countries. Great. Where the Vikings came from. Anza says, Mr. Flanagan, do you get inspiration from the characters you make from your real life? Could you oh. give some examples if you do? Um, yeah, yes, I do. Um, well, Will is the prime example. He was based on my son, Michael. Um, um, he was small, he was cheeky, he was uh, absolutely unafraid of heights. He would climb anything. Uh, he was interested in archery. All of these were qualities that Michael had. Uh, and the reason for that was I wanted to get Michael interested in reading. So I, I wrote these stories that had a central character who was basically just like him. Uh, and I thought that will it'll make him feel better about you know, not being the biggest person in the world, which he wasn't at that stage. He's quite a brawny sort of person these days. Um, he had a growing spurt. Um, but he was, as a, as a boy, he was very annoyed by the fact that he was small. He didn't think about the fact that also meant he was very fast and very agile. Uh, yeah, there are, there are compensations. Um, so, yeah, um, Horace is based on his best friend in school, uh, who's still his best friend. I mean, a guy called Jeremy. Um, Jeremy lives in London, Michael lives in Japan, and they speak every night, which is quite fascinating. Uh, very late at night, um, they're in touch with each other. Um, so, so, yeah, Horace is based on Jeremy, Big Jez. Um, Holt's wife, uh, Lady, Lady Pauline, is based on um, one of our dearest and oldest friends, uh, who was one of our bridesmaids. And uh, at one stage when I had the books writ uh, written but didn't, hadn't found a publisher, she offered to contribute if we wanted to self-publish. Um, I was glad to see that I didn't have to do that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I, 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 some of them are uh, combinations of people. But, yeah, obviously you're influenced. But a lot of the women characters, like um, Vanlin or Cassandra, um, very much influenced by my daughter, Kitty. Um, yeah, yeah, so real people, yeah. Wonderful. We are almost coming up to our time, so I'm just going to ask you two more questions. All right. Uh, the first one is from Tash, and she says, Can you remember the moment you wrote your first scene for Ruins of Gorlin? I sure remember reading that first chapter as an 11-year-old. Um, I do remember re writing that first part. It was, I had written 20 short stories for Michael and my daughter, Kitty, suggested I put them together in a book and all I did was cobble them all together. I had to rewrite completely. But when I did that, I had to do um, a prologue which set up the whole situation in Araluen and the situation of the Rangers and of the situation of Morgareth, or Morgareth as he's called in America. Um, so I wrote the prologue and I, I thought at that time, I was, it was a bit of a mistake, I thought at that stage that when you wrote a prologue it had to be all very portentous and heavy and you know, in the time of the lesser gods when Zandon flew down from Mount Coquelon. Um, and so I wrote it in this sort of very heavy ponderous style and then when the first chapter starts, it's Jenny saying, eat something, will you, you know, you, you know, you've got a big day coming. The whole style changed. And I, I realised it was too heavy. A lot of kids found it heavy going. Uh, so I, I edited it severely. I cut it back. I was going to rewrite it completely, in fact, but by that stage, the book had been published. And my um, agent said, no, it's working. People are reading it. But I cut it back. It was long and it was ponderous and it was slow moving. So, yes, I do very much remember writing those first words. That is great. This is going to be our last question of the night. Oh, no. just after 5.30. Is it from Rosalie? Uh, no, actually, it is from Simon. He has asked a lot of questions, though. Right. He says, what character do you like the best in Brother Band? Oh, that threw me because I was sure it was going to be um, in 
uh, ranges, and I was going to give my usual answer, which is tug. Oh, I think thorn. I, I really love thorn because I did invent thorn. I thought for years that I had invented Holt. I thought Holt was my masterpiece that proved that I was a genius. And then one day I was answering a question from uh, a reader in America about Holt, and I suddenly realised he was based completely on my sixth grade teacher uh, in so many ways. And I thought I didn't invent him at all. So while I love him dearly, I prefer Thorne because Thorne is a complete original. He's got one arm, he was an old smelly drunk, and he's been um, uh, rehabilitated by Hal and his mum. And, and I, I like him. I like He's a flawed hero, which is great. And I like the fact that he has the brother band's war cry, which is, let's get him. Uh, so thank you all for your questions. Um, I think we're out of time, so uh, yeah. we'll do it again. Um, latest one, the Stern Chase, brother band. Lots of action, lots of fun, lots of gags, uh, and Kloof saves the day. Um, it's out on the 30th of March out on the in 30th Australia of March, and New Zealand. In Australia and New Zealand, 30th of March. Other countries, I don't know. Uh, you'd have to contact your booksellers. They will have the, the schedule. Um, but I can't keep track of, of, of when it's coming out where. And there are more to come. Uh, as I say, I, I've just finished another Royal Ranger. I have a further one contracted, and I plan to do more... Um, uh, brother bands. I mean, I've got to. I've got to resolve some of those storylines.